Cool. Hi everyone. Thank you all for coming today to see the presentations. My name is Megan, and today I would like to present the project that I worked on during my internship called Modern Data Platform. First, I would like to give a big shout out to Altus Consulting and thank you them for hiring me as an intern consultant. I sincerely appreciate all the ongoing support and for helping me become a good data analyst and data engineer. Altus is a consulting firm that helps companies in their data journey. And it's through this internship, I'm able to take what I've learned in uni and work on projects that benefit clients. And that's what is so special about Altus. We're very customer focused compared to um, other companies so that we can help them become the best data-driven organization that they can be. So before I talk about the project, let me first explain the motivation. We have a current client, the client that we're working for, and they have an on-prem solution, and they would like to move to the cloud. But why? Why do companies want to move to the cloud? Some companies move because it's the latest trend in IT. Others move because of all the advantages that come with cloud computing. For example, you can scale your resources easily and dynamically up and down. And it also opens the door to lots of resources that have high compute power, which is excellent for data analysis. Um, but the most critical advantage of cloud computing is that it can help reduce the cost. So for our clients, for them to move from on-prem to cloud, they would like us to build a modern data platform or an MDP. So this might be a new term and let me explain what it is. MDP is a platform that caters to modern data management and is especially good for large volumes of data. For example, one of our source tables has over 400 million rows. And that's just one table. There's many more tables than that. Components of an MDP, MDP comprise of storage, processing, governance, visualization, and collaboration. The collaboration part is because one of the benefits that come with MDPs is that it acts as a centralized platform to manage all of the business's data. This means it's more cost effective and it also helps the team to make data-driven decisions. However, one of the challenges that comes with building MDPs is that there can be multiple data sources. So for example, you can have sources from on-prem, from the cloud, or even file block files, or even API requests. So the challenge is that there's, from all these different sources, you involve very customized logic for the team, and it's actually quite time consuming to ingest all this data, meaning less time is focused on analyzing the data for gathering business insights. Altis, my company that I worked for, they have realized that this is an industrial problem, and they have come up with a solution called Data Load Accelerator, or DLA. DLA is a metadata-driven framework that automatically loads and transforms your data that it caters to different um, data sources. And it provides out-of-the-box ready-made logic that can be deployed into um, many of the popular ETL tools. And it comes with orchestration templates. And it will help reduce the overall traditional development work by over 50%. So this is awesome. Businesses can now focus more on um, reporting and analyzing their data. This was really awesome news for our client, and they have agreed to use our DLA to implement the MDP. In terms of um, the high-level architecture, this is um, what we had to build for the MDP. We first have Hopefully, you can't see my mouse, but it's all right. We first have the source database in the client's environment. Then it moves into the blob storage as JSON files. After that, 
the data is extracted into landing views in the MDP database as raw data. Um, after that, transformations will be applied to the raw data and into the ODS layer. ODS stands for Operational Data Store, and basically anything in there is considered ready for use. Following on from that, stored procedures will be used to take the data in the ODS layer and apply further transformations into the presentation layer so that the data is ready to be presented in reports, which is the final step. Right, and then in terms of key contributions, I was put into a team of consultants. We first designed the design document to give to the client so that we can explain how the DI works and what features it has. As a team, we also built a proof of concept with the DLA so that we can familiarize ourselves of how we're actually going to do it. After that, we deployed the DLA into the dev environment and started to build the MDP. So we created the dimension and fact tables and also configured the extract and load processes. We are currently still building an MDP, just making sure that everything is working as expected and also especially testing for performance. As with any development work, it is not without its challenges. So some of the challenges that we went through are listed here, and let's go through them one by one. First of all, the dimension and fact tables they have ETL columns that are required to be in New Zealand time, but unfortunately, the SQL server is by default in UTC, so we cannot change that. So our solution is to just convert it into New Zealand time every time we use the get date function. Another challenge was that if the source database has a new table, where it currently has no rows, but we still want to load the data in, then it will throw an error. So to fix this, we have to provide basically the schema of this new table. So we created the new target table and provided the table column names in JSON. Additionally, because we have so many dimension and fact tables, it gets a bit complicated trying to like configure all of them together, especially since there's so many factors to think about. For example, the order of how you load actually also matters because some tables will depend on other tables. We also have to consider the load pattern type. So for example, if a row is deleted in the source database, then in order to reflect that into the MDP, do we want to flag the row is deleted or do we want to delete the row as well? We have to also think about whether to load in parallel or in sequential, or whether we want to do a full load or an inc uh, incremental load. Incremental load means that you want to load the data in incrementally, like um, you can say load in last month's data only, rather than the whole table. If you load in the whole table, then that is considered a full load. However, our biggest challenge was performance because our, on, our current on-prem solution, without blobs, it takes about eight hours to run all and run and load in all the tables. But our new MDP solution with blobs, it took more than eight hours. So um, although it is not a fair-to-fair -fair comparison, like the current on-prem solution takes eight hours without blobs, but then the MDP solution, which we are considering blobs, takes more than eight hours. Although it's not a fair comparison, we still have to be better than the on-prem solution. So we tried several ways to improve the performance. One of the first things we tried was to partition the blob files, but that was too slow. We additionally reached out to Microsoft and asked them for their advice they recommended us to use the option hint, which will allow the data to load in parallel, but that was still too slow. We tried to increase the SQL server's compute power, but that did not make much of a difference. 
We also considered changing the block file type from JSON to Parquet. However, SQL database does not natively support Parquet, so unfortunately, um, we can't do that option. The solution that actually worked for us was to do a direct load. So basically, skip the blob that skip the creating the blobs, go from the source database directly load it into the SQL database in the MDP, and this significantly improved the performance. However, we still need to verify with the client that they are all right with us doing the blobs and a later process. So out of all of this, um, the final outcomes are that the DLA will be used for orchestrating all the data flows in the MDP. Most of the DIMS and FACTS tables have been created. And here is the load schedule that we're going to use for the MDP. If the client still wants us to create blobs during the ETL process, then we will need to say that the large tables of more than 1.5 million rows, we found that 1.5 was our benchmark, that those large tables will need to be loaded incrementally so that we can take performance into account. However, our most preferred solution is to do a direct load because it's the fastest and you will go with the original load plan. Cool, so now let me go over the lessons learned I've learned in this internship. First of all, this was my first time building DIMS and FACT tables, so I'm applying some theory. And it also really made me more aware of how important performance is, and especially how long it actually takes to create JSON block files. I've also learned like, the ways to address performance issues, um, and this is going to be really helpful for future projects so that you could know the possible causes to performance issues and also think of potential ways to improve the performance. For example, you can do partitioning, increase more resources, and change the file type, or you can even use an entirely different product altogether. We could have used Snowflake, and that would have made the data load in much faster. And additionally, it is very good at defining different file types. So it can do CSV, JSON, Parquet very easily. In terms of the insights learned during this internship, I found it really interesting to compare the similarities and differences between um, the practices that I've learned to uni and also data warehousing practices. For example, in software development for Java or C Sharp, you have the solid principles. And I like to think that um, dimensional modeling in data warehousing is like the data warehouse version of solid principles. Because both of them will allow you to build software and data warehouses in a more maintainable way. And this is good for future development. I also got more exposed to the ETL tools and also the Azure product family. And this will be really helpful for future clients as well so that I'm more familiar with a tool, I'm um, more aware of its capabilities and limitations, and I can make better estimates. Finally, to some professional attributes that I picked up along the way, we had daily stand-ups to track on progress, check on our budget, and if anyone's stuck, then we can just reach out for help. I've also learned the importance of communicating with clients like um, whether it's through emails or in meetings, we have to stay in a professional manner and we have to be confident. If we are confident, then they can be, the clients can be confident in us. I also like to highlight the, um, how important knowledge sharing is in any company. I really appreciate that one of the good things that my Altus work culture that we have is that it's not just you, you have every other consultant in the company to back you up. Like, I can reach out to someone in the UK branch or the Australian branch, and I can ask them for help. And if, when they are free, they're more than happy to help. And we also have a Viva Engage community. You can just post a question, any technical question you like, and it's most likely going to be answered within one day. 
so they're pretty active. Yep, so that is me. Thank you so much. Mm.